Greetings from Las Vegas and welcome to the EOG Sports Hour. John Kelly with you on a Wednesday night. Glad to be representing EOG. The three letters stand for Ion Gaming. EOG.com, a website dedicated to the hearts and minds of sports bettors everywhere. It's football season. Things going well at Ion Gaming. We're about a month removed from our new start. September 1st, we had a fresh start cleaned house a bit. I like to say we mowed the lawn in September. We're now going to be pulling weeds here in October. Uh, clean the place out. A little landscaping needed to be done. And uh, we like to promote the smart, sophisticated gamblers. And we have two on tonight's program. Pauly Mack in studio with us tonight. Paul McDonald, a resident Las Vegas. He's been here since the mid-90s. Uh, sports handicapper of note. Very popular in town. Pauly Mack is here to handicap college football. He'll sneak in a NFL player too, but really it's college football where he's made his hay, especially on this program. How about this? 14 college football selections for Pauly Mack, 12, 1 and 1. Uh, doesn't lose very often in college football when releasing plays on the program. In the interest of full disclosure, he's made 11 NFL selections and has gone 2 and 9. Uh, 14, 10 and 1, the big picture, and that's what we like to report on the show. And even that isn't much of a big picture 25 plays but we'll keep charting his selection see how he fares this season also on tonight's program is shawnee mack he comes to us uh, from the philadelphia area eastern pennsylvania there not exactly in the city proper but uh, close enough shawnee mack a 29 year old sports better who's made a couple of appearances on the program he's given us four selections he's three out of four shawnee mack's uh, provided some intelligent commentary to the show. We're going to ask him about his hometown teams on tonight's program, the sports landscape in Philadelphia, especially about the Eagles. I want to know about uh, the Eagles and how they may fare against the St. Louis Rams this week in their game at Lincoln Financial Field. The first time all year they're coming off a loss, and we'll see how they respond. But first, let me lead off with my in-studio co-host, Paulie Mack. Good evening and welcome to the show. How you doing, Johnny? Good to have you. Same here. Uh, Resident of uh, Las Vegas now, but originally from Brockton, Mass. And he's been on a nice run with college football, pro football, though, giving it back. Uh, why are you winning on Saturday and losing on Sunday? Uh, I'll be honest with you, I have no idea. It's one of these things I, I just got to work through it. I, you know, I really believe I'm still real good in the NFL as well. Um, but we'll see. What, what I guess what you got to do is just narrow down the – where you're struggling – I've got to narrow it down, take the one or two best, and you know, try to work it back that way. And um, until I straighten out here, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, I'm not sure. How about the key to the success on Saturdays? What are you doing anything differently than you've done in years past? Yeah, like I said before, um, I, I'm just like I, I'm looking for the live dogs and stuff. And what I'm doing is not going against the power as much, you know. So I'm I'm trying to um, make sure I don't land against the power and trying to find the live dogs. So. Who would you consider to be the power teams in college football this well, season? Well, um, the power would still be, you know, Alabama, and I'm going to have them as a play this week. So, you know, um, Florida State, uh, Oklahoma I like a lot, Oregon, you know, those type of teams. But you can catch against them in, like, certain spots. But I'm just being a little more careful this year. But it's just all falling into place so far. That's the voice of Pauly Mack. Shawnee Mack is coming us to us from the Philadelphia area. Shawnee, good evening, and welcome to the show. Good evening, gentlemen. I, every time I hear Paulie Mack talk, I, I almost want to come up with my my own accent so I could sound cool on the radio too. I just absolutely Park love the, the guys. Of we gonna park the car in here? Eh? Yeah, some chatter. <laughs> park the car in the Harvard Yard, right? <laughs> yeah, I have one of my one of my good friends is from Massachusetts, and I love to just hear him talk about anything. You know, Shawnee Mack, what is it about uh, the? Northeast that makes sports fans so dedicated, devoted, intelligent, uh, invested, uh, a lot of times financially, but definitely emotionally. What is it about the Northeast corridor of this country that produces so many great uh, sports fans? Uh, I guess a lot of it has to do with, you know, the tradition. Um, you know, the Yankees have been around for a long time. The Phillies have been around for a long time. The Red Sox have been around for a long time. Uh, sport, when they were first getting started, but mostly, you know, based on the East Coast and then started to expand West. Um, you know, I just grew up, uh, you know, mainly a Phillies fan first. I'm a diehard baseball fan, you know, then the Eagles. Philadelphia is, is always going to be a football town, but, um, you know, they love, they love hockey here too. And, 
you know, the Sixers, the Sixers is a bad situation right now. Uh, you saw their win total, you know, the odds are with 15 and a half wins uh, over under. It's, it's a shame. I, I, I like what they're doing, you know, trying to completely rebuild the team, but I wonder sometimes if it's good or bad for young players if you're stunting their growth by, you know, consistently just losing. You know, that's one of the negatives to professional sports is the worst teams get the best players. I mean, it makes for parity, but a lot of times, Shawnee Mack's right, it stunts the development of a squad. And sometimes, Shawnee Mack, we see in weird situations, like when the Spurs had their season when they David Robinson was injured, then they get Tim Duncan and they, they can form a dynasty through that draft if they lay down one season. And now we're seeing uh, situations... Shawnee Mech, where teams do lay down uh, at times. It's better to be really bad than just, uh, you know, uh, mediocre. Yeah, teams, I mean, I felt bad for years. Bobcats were just terrible, but they could never get that, you know, that first overall pick because they, I, I honestly think this year it was one and two with Parker and Wiggins that were real good, but there's such a huge disparity between, like, getting the first pick and, and the third pick in a draft, you know, that could pretty much, you know, set your franchise back four or five years if you're not able to land like a LeBron James, you know, a Tim Duncan when, you know, Robinson went down. And we really see it, too, in the NFL, Shawnee Mack, where if you blow your chance at a franchise quarterback, you can really send your, set yourself back years. It's not just one or two. It can be five to seven years. We look at what's happened with the Oakland Raiders uh, in recent decades. Uh, the last 20 years, they've gone through 10 head coaches, and 24 quarterbacks have started for the Raiders. And uh, you know their, their bumbling draft choices uh, is, uh, have been legendary. It's a complete cesspool in Oakland right now. I don't know why anyone would want that head coaching job. I, I don't see bright days, you know, anywhere in their future. I mean, let's hope that, you know, Carr can be a serviceable quarterback for them, but that it's, it's just been awful. And it's not even like they're, you know, some of their draft picks without Davis were reaches. You know, Darius Hayward Bay was a terrible one, but, you know, you look at guys like Robert Gallery and, and Darren McFadden, um, you know, Khalil Mack last year was a great pick, but a lot of these guys, they, they kind of drafted right where they should have been. They just, you know, injuries, they haven't worked out. I don't know if it has something to do with their their training staff or, you know, player development, but it, it's it's terrible right now in Oakland. And uh, Paulie Mack, uh, Oakland sports fans are certainly smarting today after what happened last night at Kauffman Stadium. The Royals beat the A's 9-8 and 12 innings. It's been a tough week for Oakland sports fans. Oh, yeah. that. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, that Sperano move, I can't believe that. They, they didn't see enough of him. Uh, Miami and everywhere, this guy, I mean, he's, he's not cut out for pro football, I don't think. I don't understand that at all. Uh, you know, in the game last night, what a vicious beat. My friend coach, I feel bad for him. He had big money in Oakland. That terrible, you know what I mean? Terrible. And then you got the guys in the sports book that come up to him. I told you so. You know, they got five dollars on the game. You know, what I mean, that's just uh, people are vicious. You know what I mean? And when you say big money, what's big money? Well, I mean, I'm not sure. I, I don't ask him exactly how much, but you know, I, had, I know he had a good sized bet. You know, and uh, terrible beat. You know. Mm-hmm. No, he's not shy when he steps to the window. He moves no, he numbers. Fires, he fires, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, 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 Coach, uh, we'll try to recruit him on the program one night, maybe uh, after he gets over that Oakland loss. But up 7-3, you know, there was another Bay Area team tonight, Pauly Mack, that had a four-run cushion, and uh, you, you couldn't think how they could blow a four-run cushion. Yeah, just a different atmosphere. Like, yes. like you knew that Pirate team was a little phony, you know what I mean? They were there last year, you know, hard-working team, but... You know, usually you, you can tell if they're going to be scrappy or not, and um, tonight they were unscrappy. Oh, and Madison Bumgartner was fabulous. A complete game, four hitter, ten strikeouts, just one walk. I was on Mad Bum tonight. I love his competitive fire, and the Giants beat the Pirates 8-0, uh, and the big blow came in the fourth inning, a grand slam off the bat of Brandon Crawford and Shawnee Mac, you could not get more different games. The one we saw last night, the one we saw tonight. Uh, Tuesday night's game filled with drama and suspense. Uh, tonight's game was over in the fourth inning. Yeah, I mean, I didn't have a large wager on the A's, but I, I definitely backed the A's uh, last night. And <laughs> it, 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 you know, I guess if you're going to lose a game, at least it was an enjoyable game. You know the watch 
but I'm, I'm cheering because we talked last week about managers and how they're just ridiculous. And Ned Yost goes out and takes James Shields out, brings Ventura in, and all of a sudden my, my bet looks like, you know, a winner. And uh, just a complete collapse. I, I think it, they should have pinch hit Adam Dunn for Nick Punto towards the end, but that's a different story. And tonight's game, halfway through the game, I was at another on another forum in an in-game thread, and by the sixth inning, we were talking about the Raptors and <laughs> their their season win total. That just I had no interest in this game after about five innings. It was it was terrible. It wasn't enjoyable, and you know Bumgarner went out there and just dominated. And it wasn't until the eighth inning of the game, when down eight nothing, that the Pirates got a runner past second base. They never had two men on in the same inning until the eighth inning when they were trailing 8 nothing. And uh, about Bumgartner, I like him. I think he's the ace of the staff, obviously. The San Francisco moving forward, PV Hudson, Vogelsong, Bumgartner, that's what they'll take into the next series against the Washington Nationals in the National League Divisional Series, a best-of-three series that gets underway on Friday. Here's my problem, Shawnee Mack, with that staff. That was a good staff in 2000. 2009. It's now 2014. I think we've seen uh, better days uh, uh, previously from guys like Peavy and Hudson and Vogelsong. Yeah, you're hoping to get six innings out of them. You know, it's just a tough break that Matt Cain goes down and, and Tim Lincecum is just completely falling apart. Um, you know, the Giants kind of are what they are. You know, you got gritty players, Buster Posey and, and Hunter Pence and, you know, Pablo Sandoval. You know, there isn't a pitch he doesn't like, but, you know, these guys, they do put the ball in play. They play good defense. Brandon Crawford hit a grand slam tonight, but he's also an extremely good defensive shortstop. So, uh, I'm, you know, I'm interested to see them going forward. I, I don't I don't think they're going to win in the next series, but, you know, like we saw the other night, anything could happen. And even though it's not, you know, one game, it's five games now, it's still a shorter series. About Pablo Sandoval, uh, Shawnee Mack mentioned he's swing happy. 58% of pitches he sees, he swings at the most in Major League Baseball. Nobody swings more than Pablo. Nobody runs more than the Kansas City Royals. And uh, yesterday we watched the Royals advance uh, to the playoffs in proper. And, uh, you know, these play-in games are interesting, guys. Uh, Paulie Mack, I, I could argue that these teams really aren't even in the playoffs until they win one oh, of these. I completely agree. One of I these agree games. with that hundred percent, John. Yeah, Shawnee Mack, it's it's tough. I I know what baseball wants to do. I understand their strategy, and I think it's a winning one in terms of creating excitement at the front end of the postseason, as opposed to waiting to get it at the back end. Because sometimes you don't get it in a best of seven series, Shawnee Mack. Sometimes you get a best of seven series where a team wins in five or six, and uh, there's not a lot of drama. Now nah, it's this 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 is just game one sixty three if you want to call it to me I don't count it as you know the Royals are now officially in the postseason for the first time in like what twenty nine thirty years now now they're in I don't count this one game you know nonsense as as the postseason. EOG contributor Discreet Cat has been following these Kansas City Royals all year long. And Paulie Mack, they're a fun team to follow. Easy, hard to bet because they don't produce right, a lot of runs, right. but they're fun to root yeah. for. And there's no doubt in my mind, uh, they've, they've got the uh, team, the, the pitching staff, I should say, especially the back end of the bullpen that can shorten the game better than any team in baseball. Well, that's the thing. that, Like you said, shorten the game. Now, th- this is where a three out of five would help the Royals here against the Angels, I think, because... Uh, See, four out of seven, just what you said. It's a shorter series as well as the shorter the games. You know what I mean? It's almost like shortening a football game here. You know what I mean? And uh, if the Royals shorten the games here, then you get to Davis and Holland and uh, could be lights out. But I, I think the whole key to that series is Vargas in game one. If he upsets Weaver, I, I still think I, I feel like the Angels are going to find a way to win no matter what here in five. But, uh, you know, the, the Royals could, could be tough here, you know. The one hole in the Angels game, Shawnee Mack, is there a, they have a staff without an ace, really. Uh, when Garrett Richards went down, uh, you know, no one really strikes fear in the heart of opposing hitters on that Angels staff. And KC, we, you know, how gutty were they when they were down 7-3 to rally? I know they were at home and they were playing for their postseason lives, but I, I just like how they manufactured runs, you know, when they needed the runs and the speed. You know, that, that adds a dimension to the game that we haven't seen maybe in 20, 25 years. 
Yeah, it was almost a breath of fresh air to see Ned Yost go out and play a National League style of game. But getting back to the Angels, Jared Weaver you know, was that ace for years, and his velocity has dropped a little bit. They're going to hit. Um, for, for all the talk about you know the Royals bullpen, I think the Angels bullpen is probably just as good, maybe slightly worse. So they, you know that's a team they can also you know shorten the game, get to six innings, get into their bullpen. Um, you know the Angels can run. You know Trout can get on base and you know run. Ibar very underrated. So it's going to be an interesting series. Um, I don't know if the Royals are going to be able to hit you know enough like they did over the course of five games to be able to beat the Angels. You're listening to the EOG Sports Hour every Wednesday. It's the Mac Attack. Polly Mac in studio, Shawnee Mac on the phone uh, from the Philadelphia area. As you can tell, both know what they're talking about. We're going to ask them from a gambling standpoint, their best bets coming up. Uh, Shawnee Mac 3-1 and one on the program. He'll give us a best bet for Saturday and one for Sunday. I asked Paulie Mac about his likes and dislikes in terms of pro and college football. He says he's still confident with his NFL wagering, but uh, subpar results. What about you, Shawnee Mac? Do you, which day do you like better, Saturdays or Sundays? Uh, actually, uh, I'm in the minority here. I actually like uh, Sundays. Um, I don't. There's just certain things that I do, a little systems that aren't, you know, anything major, you know, interdivisional home underdogs, something like that, where I just don't overcomplicate things. Um, on Saturdays, I've been, I tend to sometimes get overwhelmed by the size of the card, and maybe I don't, ha- maybe I don't have the, you know, the amount of time or, you know, the amount of resources as some of these guys to be able to break down every game. So I've got to go through and really pick my spots on Saturday. It's almost, I like to survive Saturday to get into Sunday. It's just how I've, you know, my whole gambling career, if you could say, is I've always done better on Sunday, Sunday somehow than I have on Saturday. Shawnee Mack, would this be fair to say I praised the sports fan in the northeast corridor of the country earlier in this segment. Would it be fair to say that there's a blind spot there somewhere with college football that the, uh, the sports fan in the northeast doesn't have as good a handle in college football as they do maybe for the professional sports or uh, compared to uh, either the southerners or the midwesterners, uh, the college sports doesn't resonate. Well, yeah, right in my location. Like, I went to St. Joe's University. We don't have a football team. You know, we're a basketball school. And he, he, even putting a basketball school label is on a stretch. You have to go back to, you know, when Jim Mary Nelson and Delonte West were there was the last time, you know, we had a good team. But for me, I would have to, you know, root for Penn State. And, you know, Temple's program has just been awful. You know, my college, my favorite college football team is actually Tennessee Volunteers. You know, that was the first game I ever went to. I was 11 years old. I went to Neal Stadium with my grandfather, and that's just a team, you know, I chose to root for going forward. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. In the Northeast, it's just there's not a lot of great college football. Um, it's times like this, this time of the year, that I wish I actually lived down south in, like, SEC country because, I mean, I just love that they're so passionate, you know. And, you know, you look at – um you know, what's going on in Mississippi right now, you know, Mississippi and Mississippi state, you know, both in the top 12 for like, you know, the first time in 60 some years or whatever it is. And, you know, I'm not, I don't get a part of that. You know, the, the last time I remember uh, a team that was, you know, stunk for a long time and was a huge underdog that in this area that was any good was Rutgers back when Ray Rice was here. Let's step aside and take a quick time out right here. When we return, more with Paulie Mack and Shawnee Mack. We'll go on record with selections. You're going to hear 14 plays in all tonight. Paulie Mack will do the heavy lifting. He's got 11 of the 14 plays for us. Shawnee Mack has his pair of plays. And we've got a selection from EOG contributor Winky Duck. He emailed me with a play in the game between the St. Louis Cardinals and the Los Angeles Dodgers. Wainwright against Kershaw. Stay tuned for that. You're listening to the EOG Sports Hour. There's no such thing as a sure thing, unless you're talking about Ion Gaming. Ion Gaming is a website dedicated to the hearts and minds of sports bettors everywhere. If you're looking for smart, sophisticated sports handicapping information and insight, go to EOG.com. If you're looking for the latest news on the ever-changing landscape of Nevada's race and sportsbook industry, go to EOG. If you're looking for the most recent developments involving the worldwide sports betting scene with an emphasis on the leading sports books in San Jose, Costa Rica, go to EOG. 
Sportsgamblersanonymous.com. And finally, if you're looking to join an online community of sports gamblers where registration is free and the information is priceless, go to EOG.com. You get the idea. Why gamble on other sports betting websites when Ion Gaming is a sure thing? And I love a sure thing. Hi, this is Rick Alec, president of Sports Options.